Welcome to Circuits Academy. In this video, I am going to explain about the fundamentals of graph theory or network topology, followed by some terminologies used in the graph theory and step-by-step -step procedure to construct graph from the circuit diagram. Before I start, I'd like to place a couple of questions to the viewers, which are very much relevant to the topic of discussion. Question number one, though the terms circuit and networks are used alternatively in the engineering domain, is there any difference between circuit and network? Please provide your comments in the comment section. The second, the second question is what software you are using for electrical or electronic circuit simulation? Any time have you thought about how the software is able to perform the circuit analysis for you? Please add your comments in the comment sections. I will reply to your comments. What is graph theory? Why we should go for graph theory for circuit analysis? Graph theory, the name itself indicates that it's a graphical approach to solve the circuit problem. We know very well that the manual method of solving the circuits such as mesh analysis or nodal analysis or theorems cannot be applied directly to solve the complicated circuits. So we need to do some modifications in the existing techniques to solve the complex circuit. One such approach is graph theory. So as per the statement given here, graph theory is a systematic and step-by-step -step method to analyze the network since it is a step-by-step -step method we can very well write computer programs to solve the circuit problems graph theory basically converts the circuit diagram into graph then it extracts the matrices from the graph these matrices can be solved by software such as matlab or python now we'll discuss the step-by-step -step procedure to obtain a graph of the network. Step one says identify and name the nodes. So what is a node? Node is a point of interconnection of two or more elements. Consider the circuit shown in figure. We are going to obtain the graph of this network. Let's identify the nodes of the network. We have one node here, which connects the battery and resistor R1 and another node which connects R1, R2 and R3 and this is also a node which connects R3 and R4. Finally, the bottom node connects the battery as well as R2 and R4. Let us draw the graph separately here. So we have four nodes. Assume the nodes as A, B, C and D. So we have done with the step one. Step 2 says replace the voltage source by short circuit. So we have a voltage source connected between node A to node D. So replace the voltage source by short circuit. Then replace the current source by open circuit. Since we don't have any current source, we can ignore step 3. Step 4 says replace the components by line segments. So replace R1 by a line segment and R3 by another line segment and R2 a line segment between B and D and R4 as a, another line segment. So we have done with the step 4 and step 5 says name the branches and assume the directions. So totally we have 5 branches. Let's name the branches as 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and assume the directions. Since we don't have any directions mentioned in the given circuit diagram, you can assume any direction. Suppose the directions are given in the circuit diagram, then you must assume the same directions in the graph. Next, we'll discuss about some of the common terminologies used in the graph theory. First one is a planar versus non-planar graph. Suppose if you are able to draw the graph on a plane surface such that no branch crosses any other branch in the graph, then it's called as a planar graph. Refer the graph here. You can notice that no branch crosses any other branch in the graph or you can say that no branch passes over any other branch. On the other hand, non-planar graph, you can notice that there are crossing of branches taking place. Even if you try to redraw the circuit also, you end up with crossing of branches. Next is the oriented and directed graph. So if you add directions to the graph, it's called as a oriented or directed graph. Suppose the directions are given in the circuit diagram, then you must assume the same directions in the graph. If not, you can assume your own directions in the graph. 
Next, we have the important terminology of the graph theory that's called as a tree of the graph. What is a tree of the graph? A tree is a connected subgraph containing all the nodes of a graph but no closed path. So if you are able to connect all the nodes of the graph such that no closed path is present, then it is called as a tree of the graph. Consider the same circuit what we discussed in the previous slide. Let us draw the graph of the network. Assume the nodes as A, B, C and D. Replace the voltage source by short circuit and replace the resistance by line segments 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have a graph of the given network. Now let's draw the tree of the network. So as per the statement of the tree, we should be able to connect all the nodes. Connect node A, node B, node C and node D. So we have connected all the nodes. At the same time, we have not formed any loop in the graph. So this subgraph is called as a tree of the graph. So similarly, you can construct many trees. For example, so this is also can be considered as a, another tree. You can construct many trees depending on the number of nodes in the graph. We have an important term called wigs. What is a wig? The branches of a tree are called wigs. For example, if you are choosing this tree, then the branches 1, 2 and 3 are called as a wigs of the graph. Suppose if you are choosing this as your uh, tree, then the branches 3, 4, and 5 are called twigs of the graph. The number of twigs in a graph is equal to n minus 1. n here represents the number of nodes in the graph. Here we have 4 nodes. So the number of twigs is equal to 4 minus 1 which is equal to 3. So you can choose any tree. For each tree you will have only 3 branches. So those three branches we are going to call it as a fix of the graph. Next we have code tree and links. Code tree is nothing but complement of the tree. So in the last slide we have seen what is a tree. So for the graph shown in the figure, the tree branches are 1, 2 and 3. The remaining branches 4 and 5, they are called as the links or cords. If you are connecting the links, of the graph then it is called as a code tree of the tree so this is the code tree of this tree so the branches are 4 and 5 called as a links or cords similarly if you choose some other tree let's say i'm going to choose the tree as 4 3 and 5 then the remaining branches 1 and 2 they are called as a links of the graph and if you connect both links then it's called as a core tree of this tree so for each tree there will be a complement of the tree it's called as a core tree thanks for watching if you have any questions please drop it in the comment section